everywhere. So, I'm on a mission to see how we're treating our backyards both here and further afield. What are we doing to be cleaner and greener? What do we need to change? And what does the future hold? So join me to Radar as I go global. Don't worry, I'll plant plenty of trees to offset the travel. Now, where's my passport? Too many people treat our planet as if there's another one just down the road. Obviously, there isn't. This is the only one we have, so we'd better make sure we're treating it right. Because if we aren't, we'll all be in the fast lane to a pretty murky future. As that wise old ginger sage, the Lorax, once said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So in this series, I'm on the trail of people who do care a whole awful lot to see what they're doing to make our world a little better. That's going to involve a fair bit of travel, so it seems a good idea to look first at the future of transport. But in order to see where we're going, we need to know where we've been. In the beginning, there was wriggling. Then we grew legs and discovered walking. About 10,000 years ago, we invented the wheel. But it wasn't until 240 years ago when the wheel was attached to a newfangled invention called the engine that things really began to roll. Suddenly, more people could get more places with a great deal more ease and speed. In 50 years, there'll be about 9 billion of us. So what on earth will get us from A to B then? Personally, I'm still hoping it's the jetpack. The only problem with a jetpack is that it still requires fuel. But what about an aircraft that's solar powered? Simon, the bright spark behind my trusty solar torch hat, is working on a prototype. Hello, Rita. Lovely to meet you finally. I know, all of these years travelling around wearing your hat on my head. Well, come so on in. Here this... is what I've come to see. This Look at it. it. The beauty. This is the 2C Silver Eye. It's your silver eye in the sky, solar powered, of course. The smallest commercially viable solar powered plane is what we're building here. It'll be able to fly continuously, loiter over a football game, or go and investigate radiation leakage at Fukushima, send back weather reports. You could have a whole network of these flying above a city, like a Wi Fi scenario. All of those functions that sometimes you rely on a satellite, you know, a hundred million dollar satellite. This thing would just quietly fly out to its altitude, yeah. go into its allotted space and set up a network with all the others. This is a flexible panel, same as used in your hat, which would be a really nice way to build an aeroplane, but unfortunately it needed a wing twice this size to get the same amount of power. These ones here have a feel. Try and bend it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Sanely fragile. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, We're that's... building a wing here that has to be out of flex without smashing the panels. Where'd the love of solar come from? It's about as green technology as you can get. A tonne of sand turned into solar panels generates as much power as 500,000 tonnes of coal. Crikey. Yeah. That's a pretty good statistic. So it's, uh, it's definitely a clean energy solution for the, for the world, really, yeah. isn't it? So that's our total weight, including the payload, 1636 grams. Everything is weighed, even the wire that we use to connect solar panels. It's very much a balancing act of a, you know, a number of variables. So there's our thrust meter, which is a fish scale. We have a battery which simulates the same power that we're getting from the solar panels. Here we go. This engine has been set up through some very careful calculations to provide the amount of thrust that we need off those solar panels. So we're looking at uh, 610 grams there. Just enough to make this plane fly. That's an enormous amount of power from a very small energy input. Well, it's a very, very efficient engine. Oh, hi, Chris. Hi, bro. Chris, Hello. my brother, he's the pilot. Hello. Nice to meet you, Radar. Nice to meet you. He builds his own planes. Great. Slightly bigger than these ones. Slightly bigger. Not a lot bigger, but yeah. <laughs> Big enough to carry you in. Great. Others tried the thrill of building and flying their own machines. This monoplane was flown in the Wairarapa by Theo White. I got about 10 feet off and I sailed along for about 50 yards or so like that. Well, I was scared before I got in the machine, but once you get into the machine, you haven't got time to think of anything frightened. Man could fly. A recent eco-friendly flight around the world used less than a litre of fuel every 13 kilometres. That's about the same as a hatchback. What kind of fantastical flying machine was it? It was a microlight. 
So this is classified as a microlite? Yes, it is. Because yeah. I always think of it as a deck chair under a lawnmower motor with a hand glider wing. Sure, <laughs> sure. That's a little bit more sophisticated. Yeah, my father put this together, purchased the kit set, so it comes in a big box of a lot of aluminium parts. And, uh... and hopefully really good instructions. Yes. <laughs> Shall we, um, is there a technical term? Commit aviation. Let's commit aviation. OK, I let's like do it. That. I've put a lot of things together with my dad in the garage, but I'm not sure that... <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> you know, a plane. <laughs> Microlites have a nylon fabric skin over a metal frame. Car makers are looking at the skin idea too. BMW are developing a prototype car that has a seamless skin stretched over a movable metal frame, allowing the car to change shape at the driver's whim. Who knows whether that will take off? There we have it. Aviation. We've done that thing that eluded man for centuries. Yeah. Would you like to do a wee bit of a whizzy turn or just make sure there's nothing behind us? Would you like a go? Oh, sure. Okay, you got it, right? Okay. That's beautiful. And then level the wings with a bit to the left. There you go, we'll make a pilot out of you. Aircraft engineers are looking to nature for ways to reduce the environmental cost of travel. It turns out that flying in formation and gliding into land might not just be for the birds. That was marvellous. Oh, I'm dangerously hooked. I'm going to have to go and have a, a bit of a sit down and, and convince myself that I don't need to purchase one of these. Time to head off to the new world, the USA. Rest assured I'll be offsetting my jet setting by planting trees.